Now, the spray drift reducing technology mentioned by Dr. Loschke is out there, and in some cases, it can be as simple as updating the nozzles on your spray rig. Ground Cover TV spoke to grain growers who've invested in some of the latest technology to get their thoughts on how it helps their spray management. Sitting inside the tractor's warm cab is Rick Vater. It's a cold, blustery day, not spraying weather. And Rick has water in the tank to demonstrate the type of technology he's using to help manage spray drift on his Saddleworth property on the edge of South Australia's Clare Valley. Well, by using the air induction nozzle, it, um, it creates a larger, larger coarser droplet, so it's, it's less likely to drift. And um, you know, we use it at a low pressure, and um, so you don't get those fine droplets that, that tend to be the cause of the main drift. And the other thing that was important to us was on our boom we put a auto levelling system which actually kept the, um, the boom on either end at the same height. So if you're in undulating areas it, it stayed where it's supposed to. And when your paddocks are small, drift doesn't have far to travel. Our cropping paddocks probably average around 80 acres and um, you know, just on our own farm uh, most of the time you know, if we're spraying cereals with a hormone uh, our legumes won't be any more than one to two paddocks away, you know, in any direction. So, uh, and then we're also in a, um, a vineyard area, which uh, I think our closest vines are about six k's away. So we've got to be wary of those as well. Under the new regulations and without drift reducing technology, the required buffer zone could have a big impact. As an example of the distances involved, from the fence behind me across the paddock to the fence in front of the spray rig, is 300 metres, so that paddock becomes the buffer zone. The GRDC is currently investing in the development of new buffer zone models for spray nozzle technologies which deliver coarse and extra coarse spray quality. This developmental work is being done by the University of Queensland's Centre for Pesticide Application and Safety and the outcome of this modelling will be delivered to the APVMA. So for people like Rick, the right choice of spray technology will potentially result in a reduction of buffer zones. It's an option everyone has, and it might simply require some new nozzles. Nozzles are easy to update, and in fact they should be updated you know, every year or two, because the nozzles wear out. Air inductions, um, because they are air inductions, actually last a little bit longer, because they're not uh, the force of the... Of the um, Water and chemical are not actually hitting the tip, it's actually hitting before the tip, before it gets inducted with air. Same day, but on the other side of the Clare Valley. The technology on this rig allows the flow to pulsate and the jets alternate as the spray droplets are delivered to their target. Again, due to the adverse weather, water was used for this demonstration. Uh, this system is fitted out with AIM command. Uh, it allows us to control our our pressures and our droplet size, independent to speed or pressure. A GPS guided tracking system is also used to further manage the farm's spray program. With this technology it gives us a coverage map to allow us to know exactly where we have and haven't been. Um, it allows us to come back to within about two centimetres where we were. So if we had a, a side of a paddock which was close to a, a crop that we couldn't afford to spray on, um, we could leave two or three runs to suit, come back to them when the conditions are right and quite spray quite accurately to make sure we've got everything. The rig and property are owned by David Maitland and this high tech spray unit is just one aspect of this grain grower's approach to improving spray management. In conjunction uh, with the other things that uh, as uh, producers uh, we um, undertake uh, sort of ongoing uh, um, training, uh, ongoing um, sort of updates with uh, newer technologies. We've got uh, the Hartfield site, um, in our case just down the road, and we've got people like Graham Betts who uh, uh, present uh, the, their latest uh, thinking. And I think uh, as producers we uh, are uh, trying to uh, keep ourselves abreast of the latest uh, in technologies. As part of his spray program, buffer zones are left to be sprayed later. We're continually coming back, filling in the uh, buffer zones as uh, the conditions uh, uh, come into play to uh, 
uh, make them uh, all doable. Thinking, technique and technology. Growers like David Maitland and Rick Fater regard it simply as common sense.